Senator Murray. Uh, Senator Murkowski. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. Um, I, too, am concerned about the border, as we all are. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about that other border that's a little uh, harder to, to identify, and, that is, and that's what happens on the waters. I want to talk about the Coast Guard because I'm concerned about our Coast Guard. We are asking our Coast Guard men and women to do more, to take on more, uh, whether it is, it is trying to, to, to intercept across the southern, in, in the southern waters there, not on land, but in, that, in, in, the, in the border areas on our waters. Um, I note in your, in your testimony before the committee today, you don't ref the, reference the Coast Guard at all in your oral comments. You do mention in your written testimony the uh, expansion that the Coast Guard presence will take in the Indo-Pacific region. I recognize that, but I will tell you, Mr. Secretary, I worry. I worry about we, what we are putting on our United States Coast Guard in terms of enhanced mission. In addition to what you want to do in the Indo-Pacific, you've got an Arctic that is wide open and getting wider and more open all the time, and you know that the resources that we have up there to cover that, that huge expanse are, are, are not sufficient. And, and yet, I look at this budget, and I, I'm not sure who's not advocating for our Coast Guard. Sometimes I think our Coast Guard does not advocate for their budget uh, sufficiently enough. But I am very worried about whether or not the Coast Guard actually even belongs in the Department of Homeland Security. Because as I look, I look at your org chart here, a lot, of, a lot of boxes, and here's the Coast Guard hanging out at the very, very bottom, kind of on its own. And then I look at the budget, and I feel like it is, it is, it's, it's almost orphaned within the department. And our reality is, is that the priorities just continue. So let me, let me ask about this. Um, we, are, we are in a place where, uh, again, the demands are even greater. We did not see the Coast Guard included in the President's border or national security supplemental funding request. That disappoints me a great deal. Um, we have seen the Coast Guard resources basically being cannibalized, for lack of a better word, um, for, for funding other agencies within the IHS budget. And, uh, and then, again, the budget anticipates an expanded area of emphasis in the Indo-Pacific. Well, I think the efforts in the Arctic are, are, are left languishing. And you know as well as I do the issue with the icebreakers. Um, we were able to prevent another unforced error this, uh, just a couple weeks ago when it comes to meeting the Arctic commitment by securing funding to procure the commercially available icebreaker. That funding had been taken from us in the prior fiscal year, so we had to fight to keep it in. We were successful with that. But we're looking at the polar security cutter line. Admiral Fagan states that the PC, PSC is the top acquisition priority, and yet the FY25 budget reflects zero funding for the program. In fact, the program received a $150 million rescission. We worked hard to limit that. I appreciate working with the chairman on this. She understands very, very well. Um, but again, we've got... We've got FY24 rescission. FY25 would have been the second year in a row for funding on that program that would have been paused. So I, I, I would like you to share with the committee whether or not you feel that our Coast Guard is receiving the necessary budget support um, given the increased operations that they face. And, and, and second, if you can speak to to the issue of the icebreakers and whether or not um, the PCS is viewed as a top acquisition priority. Um, and, and, and really, give, give it to me a little more broadly. 
does the co are the Coast Guard budgets being reduced at DHS level? Because that's that's how those of us that are following Coast Guard are feeling. So I'm going to let you talk now. I've taken four minutes to to shape it up for you, but please help me out because I'm worried about our Coast Guard. Um, Senator Murkowski, um, I share your concern because, in fact, more and more is being asked of the United States Coast Guard, and remarkably, uh, they perform more and more every single day. Uh, as this hearing is proceeding, uh, they are in Baltimore uh, responding to the tragic collapse Probably of the Probably going to be in Louisiana, uh, too. And they will be there as well, and they were in Hawaii on a search and rescue mission following the tragic fires uh, there. Uh, let, me, let me assure you, with respect to your institutional point, I've, I believe very strongly that the United States Coast Guard belongs in the Department of Homeland Security from a mission perspective, number one. Number two, I fight vigorously for the budget for the United States Coast Guard, and uh, I have encouraged the leadership of the Coast Guard across the country, not just in headquarters, for them to fight for the budget uh, as well. I um, can only echo uh, the concerns that you have expressed that uh, the Coast Guard is underfunded, and it is specifically underfunded when it comes to execution of the Arctic strategy. Russia has between 30 and 50 vessels capable of navigating through the Arctic region. They vary in capability, but there are 30 strongly capable vessels, and we fight uh, with two uh, um, antiquated vessels, and yet our Coast Guard personnel work magic with them. Um, I would be eager to work with you to plus up uh, the Coast Guard's uh, budget. Uh, these, you know, we, we work under statutory caps. There are trade-offs, uh, but I would um, welcome the opportunity uh, to work with you to increase the Coast Guard's budget quite, quite significantly. And we're incredibly grateful for, I believe it was $140 million to obtain the commercially available icebreaker. That um, is the tip of the spear of what we need. Well, it's a gap filler. I'd like to talk to you about uh, the one polar uh, class vessel that is in the water. Apparently, Polar Star has suffered some damage. I just learned about this. I don't know what the status is going to be, but it just it's a reminder to me that as an Arctic nation, when we have one operational polar class vessel and it doesn't even get to the Arctic, we are woefully behind. Mr. Chairman, um, I want to work with you on this and what we can do to, to better help our Coast Guard. I know it's important to you as well. No, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Senator McCaskey, for your uh, commitment and vigilance on this issue. Look forward to working with you. Chair Murray. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Secretary. Let me just say I have been very frustrated by recent 